So in a recent live stream, I was asked this question, how do I learn a new technology? How do I start learning a new language or a new framework? What's the process there? Well, Kaushik, you seem to have done a bunch of those. How do you do it? Uh, I started answering that person by saying that it really depends on the situation. There is no one set process. But as I was explaining to that person, I realized that I actually, without my knowledge, I have created a bunch of steps that I tend to follow most of the times when learning something new. So in this video, I want to share the four steps that I typically take in order to learn a new technology, be it a new language or a new framework or anything of that sort, so that you can possibly benefit from it as well. So the process that I follow to learn something new has always depended on the time that I was learning the technology, right? So when I was in college, I'm gonna share something that's probably gonna give out my age. But when I was in college, the internet wasn't as accessible as it is today, right? We certainly didn't have internet at home. And uh, the speed of the internet was definitely not uh, suitable for any kind of video streaming. So video learning was definitely out. There wasn't YouTube at the time. So most of the learning that I used to do was typically just reading from a textbook, right? We were given a textbook and that contained all the material that we had to learn. And, you know, it was just basically reading from beginning to end. And that was the learning process. And the technology that I was learning at the time, be it like C or C++, was, I should say, suitable for that kind of learning. It wasn't something that would change from month to month. The problem with technologies today is that that's no longer true. You cannot pick a book and then read it from end to end and then say, yes, I've learned this technology, right? Because often you don't have books for the technologies you're trying to learn. And if you were to spend that amount of time to learn a technology by reading a book, by the time you're halfway through the book, the technology has changed, right? The technology has evolved. Some of the things that, you, that were printed in the book are no longer valid. So that's not really a very usable technique for some of the technologies today. So what I've ended up doing is over time, I have built these four steps that I follow to learn something new that I pretty much use most of the times today when I'm learning something new, all right? So what are those four steps? Step one starts with going to the website, the official website of the technology and looking for something called the Quick Start Guide. Most of the new technologies like frameworks or languages have this thing called a quick start guide on their website. The idea is something like this. You have like five minutes or 10 minutes to introduce somebody new what the technology is about. How do you introduce that technology to that person, right? Most of the new frameworks that are introduced these days have this thing, right? So basically have a guide format that are like four or five steps to cover in order to do something, right? Do the very minimum necessary to get your feet wet with the technology and kind of get a feel for what the technology or framework is all about, okay? So that's typically the first thing that I do when I'm learning a new technology today, okay? Let's say I wanna learn a new framework. I go to the official website first. I don't look at anything else. I go to the official website and I look for the presence of this quick start guide. If there is a quick start guide, I'm all set, right? I go to that guide and I actually follow those steps. So let's say I wanna learn Kotlin today. I wanna to learn Android programming, for example. So what I do is I go to the official website, just do a Google search, find the official website and see if there is a quick start or a get started button, right? So click that button. It'll probably be, uh, I haven't seen the Kotlin website though, it could be something else, but it's, it'll probably be some very brief, very short introduction to that technology, right? I'm giving you examples, but it's very likely to be true with some of the newer frameworks and technologies today, okay? So what I do is I not only read it, I actually do the thing, I actually do the quick start. If there is something to download, I'm gonna download it. I follow the steps and I actually do the objective in the quick start. So this, serves a couple of purposes. And I'll tell you why I do this as well. 
So the first thing is you very quickly, with very minimal investment of time and effort, you kind of get a sense for what that technology is about, right? It's the first thing. The second thing is there is a specific advantage of doing this versus getting your information in any other sources, be it books or video courses or YouTube videos or whatever else, because the technologies these days continue to evolve. So if you are looking at a book or a YouTube video, you don't know when that video was made, when that book was written, if the steps that that video outlines is still applicable, if you can really follow those steps and still have a working solution. You don't know that, right? And being that you're new to the technology, if something were to break, right? If a newer version has caused some changes that causes that step, that guide to break, you know, in a book or a YouTube video, since you're new, you don't know if you are doing something wrong or if it's a problem with the guide, right? So as somebody who is getting into a technology for the very first time, you need all the help you can get. You need to make sure that whatever you're doing has very minimal chances of failure, right? So that's the reason why I highly recommend when you're getting started, go to the official uh, website and look for a quick guide. Okay, so there is a very good chance that that guide is kept up to date with newer versions. So it's very unlikely that any errors are by an external factor, right? So if something is not working, it's very likely you're doing something wrong as opposed to like a version mismatch or anything of that sort. Uh, however, there is a chance that the official guide, the official quick start itself isn't up to date in which case you should really reconsider your choice of learning that framework or technology. But sometimes you're stuck, I understand that. But that those situations are very rare, okay? That doesn't happen a lot. Most of the times the quick start guide is kept up to date. Now that you've completed the quick start, the next thing I would recommend you do is look for some videos. It could be YouTube videos, it could be a course that covers a bunch of topics together in like a progression format. It could be any of those. Look at videos and see what the mentor or the teacher is teaching you about the technology, right? So this is where you've got something working, you're feeling good about yourself. Now we wanna dive a little bit deeper, not too deep, but just a little bit deeper, you wanna get more exposure into this technology, right? A lot of YouTube videos are great for doing this, right? They, they have a short format, they cover some content that you can use, right? Uh, you can also go for courses. That's something that I do as well. I don't hesitate to buy courses because I like the progression format where you start from a certain stage and then you end at a certain stage. The instructor has thought through the order in which you're supposed to learn those things. So that's something that I love about a course format. It's almost like you have a mentor who's walking you through that progression and I love that. So that would be the next step that I follow, right? After the quick start, I look at a course or I look at a bunch of YouTube videos which help me cover those things. And that's something that I would recommend as well. Uh, if there is a Java Brains video, shameless plug here i would definitely recommend you check that out unfortunately i don't have the benefit of looking at a java brains video to learn something because if i don't have that knowledge it's very obvious that there isn't a java brains video for it but any course which covers a step-by-step -step progression of your knowledge would be a very good next step from here so that would be step two in the learning journey take a video course or youtube videos to learn about the technology with someone else guiding you through the process. Now a video course will not cover everything that you need to know, okay? This might cover everything that you want to know at that present time. I have had a situation recently where I had to build a plugin for like a major SDK. And for me, I didn't even have to do the video course. I just did the quick start. I knew what I had to do to get the job done. I did the job and just like it was a quick start, I ended up doing a quick stop as well. I didn't have to learn more because my job was done. I'm not going to be touching that SDK again. That's it, right? End of story. So that could be you. You could say, okay, this is enough for me to learn to get the job done. Or you could go to the next step and say, I'm going to do a course. And with the course, I have enough knowledge to get the job done. I'm done. Okay. But if 
you want to work for a longer period of time, if your career is dependent on your knowledge of that technology, then a video course is probably not enough. A video course typically does not cover all the details. And I say that as somebody who makes video courses, a video course is not supposed to cover all the details, right? If a course covers everything, then that course will never end. So you have a fair idea of the breadth of the technology by doing a video course. But in order to dive deep and get expertise on that, on that technology, you have to pick a book. You have to pick a book which covers end to end what the technology can do, what are the features of the technology, the framework of the language and how you can effectively use it. A lot of work goes into writing a book and typically books are very much in depth, right? They cover the topic in depth. So that would be the next step, step three of learning a new framework or a language. Pick a good book and read it. And just like with the videos, what I typically do is not follow everything end to end because that can take a lot of time. I get a gist for what the book is trying to convey. I don't follow the exercises by actually doing it, but I make sure I understand the code examples that are covered in the book so that I can later use the book for reference and then implement it when the need arises. But I do make sure that I can get, a, get an overall sense for what the book is trying to say and specifically dive deep into the areas that I'm interested in. Okay, so now we have done with the book and you have a sense for the details or at least you know where to get the details when you need it. The fourth and final step that you should do, or this is the fourth step that I typically do when I'm learning a new technology, is to build something with it, right? Build a project with that technology. If it's a framework, build an application with the framework. If it's a language, build an application with that language. So this is where I'm actually writing code and doing something on my own, which is different from the exercises in the quick start or the video or the book. Doing those exercises is gonna give you a feel for how to work with that framework or language. And you also would have run into some common issues, some common errors that you typically run into when working on the technology. So this is where you go get your hands dirty and build something from the scratch, okay? This is also where you kind of get an objective look for what an application looks like built in that technology. So let's say you get a job and you're working on that technology in your work. Most of the times, the application that you're building at work is not just using that particular technology, it's using a bunch more technologies and it's kind of like the code base is like a mix of all those different things put together. So it's hard for you to kind of isolate and learn from the code because you have to learn a bunch more to make sense for like one piece of code, right? It's using like technology A and technology B. You kind of need that help where you can take the technology that you're interested in in isolation, learn that thing alone so that you're not influenced by some of the other things that are going on, right? You don't have that burden of trying to learn a bunch more stuff. So that's where building an application on your own is super helpful. You get to control what are the technologies you're working on, so you have a say in how your application turns out, right? And since you're starting from the scratch, you add on to it step by step so that cognitive load is a little easier to handle. So you're not overwhelmed by a whole bunch of technology decisions that's been made for you. You get to make those step by step so it's easier for you to follow. So this is a fourth step that I take when I'm really committed to that technology, right? I know that I'm gonna be working on this thing for the next two years or three years. This is what I do to kind of get myself uh, comfortable with it to develop that expertise. I work on an application. Again, these four steps are not mandatory, okay? I recommend the order because this is kind of like a good progression. I've put some thought into why I progress in this way because you know, you kind of get more and more exposed to the intricacies of that technology or a framework, but you don't have to do all those steps. Like I said, just a quick start could be enough to solve your problem, in which case you just do the quick start and you move on. Or just watching a course is good enough to solve your problem, in which case you do that. 
But again, if you're if you know that you're going to be working on a technology for a longer period of time, there's no reason to not dive deep and develop that expertise. So these are the four steps that I personally follow to get that expertise on any framework or technology. I hope this was helpful in your journey to learn something new.